Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. Do you have no shame? Dominic Carter here with you folks. Thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters march through Manhattan, New York City, lighting off smoke bombs, flares, some of them carrying Hamas flags on the same day of absolute heartbreak in Israel. The funeral for one of the six hostages killed by Hamas over the weekend. This is what the protesters in New York City sounded like, an absolute disgrace. Absolute madness. And I, I don't know whether they had a permit from the New York City Police Department, but and I get it, the First Amendment rights, but you don't have a right to tie up traffic to to throw smoke bombs in a city that was hit by terrorists in 2001, and people get confused. They don't know if the smoke is from a bomb, a, a, a fire. It, th these permits, whether they have them or not, the police need to crack down on these protests. They, they, they should be limited to a narrow area, and that is it. No mobile protests. If they want to whine and complain about their First Amendment rights, so be it. Whine and complain. The funeral for Hirsch Goldberg Poland, an American Israeli citizen, who was abducted 23 years old by Hamas from the Nova Music Festival October 7th. You will hear his mother. It is absolutely heartbreaking. At the funeral in which she begged for her son's forgiveness for not being able to protect him. We'll also focus on the issue as it relates to the biggest Caribbean Day parade in the country. Brooklyn, New York, yet again, more violence. It happens every year. I, 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 I don't understand the point of having these parades, these celebrations. Five people shot. Five people shot. And we'll continue to update you on the migrant situation, which is also an absolute disgrace. 800-848-9222, 800-848-9222. I want you to listen to the father at the funeral in Israel and also the president of Israel, which is followed by the father's voice. The father is John uh, pa uh, Poland, and he says, that he saw a clip in Israel of the protests in Solidarity Sunday in support of his son. This is the father followed by the president of Israel. This morning, I saw a clip of a vigil that took place in New York last night. How appropriate that the crowd was singing, Ani ve'ata nishane et ha'olam. You and I will change the world. The 23 years of life that we had with you were a blessing. As a father and as the president of the state of Israel, I want to say how sorry I am. How sorry I am that we didn't protect her on that dark day. How sorry I am that we failed to bring him home in his life and in his death. Hirsch has touched all of humanity deeply. And this is what his mother had to say. Absolutely heartbreaking as she spoke at her only son's funeral, who was 23 years old. Okay, sweet boy, go now on your journey. 
I hope it's as good as the trips you dreamed about because finally, my sweet boy, finally, 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 you're free. <laughs> I will love you and I will miss you every single day for the rest of my life. But you're right here. I know you're right here. I just have to teach myself how to feel you in a different way. And Hirsch, there's one last thing I need you to do for us. Now I need you to help us stay strong. And I need you to help us survive. One additional reason why I have told you folks that Trump is headed back to the White House and no matter what Kamala Harris does, she's going to lose. And by the way, there's polling out now that indicates that it amongst the swing states that it's heading towards Trump. It's going to be interesting because the debate is set for exactly one week from today. But I want you folks to listen to this. Kamala Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Tim Walls of Minnesota, asked about the six hostages killed in in Israel by Hamas. Well, by Hamas, I should say. And um, no reaction. Listen to this, folks. What's your reaction to the six hostages being found dead um, in Gaza? All right. Thanks, everybody. The man said, thanks, everybody. He was standing right in front of the reporter, act like he didn't see her, and walked away as his Secret Service detail walked away with him. In a moment, I'm going to start with your telephone calls from around the country. But President Biden said Monday that Netanyahu, the prime minister, is not doing enough to secure a hostage deal after the six captives were found dead in a Hamas terror tunnel in Gaza. I want you to listen to Netanyahu's response, his detailed response, and this is what the prime minister had to say. Well, I want to set the record straight. On April 27th, Secretary of State Blinken said that Israel made an extraordinarily generous offer for a hostage deal. On May 31st, Israel agreed to a U.S.-backed proposal. Hamas refused. On August 16th, Israel agreed to what the United States defined as a final bridging proposal. Hamas refused again. On August 19th, Secretary Blinken said, Israel accepted the U.S. proposal. Now Hamas must do the same. On uh, August 28th, that's five days ago, five days ago, Deputy CIA Director said that Israel shows seriousness in the negotiations. Now Hamas must show the same seriousness. I want to ask you something. What has changed in the last five days? What has changed? One thing, these murderers executed Six of our hostages, they shot them in the back of the head. That's what's changed. And now after this, we're asked to show seriousness? We're asked to make concessions? What message does this send Hamas? It says, kill more hostages, murder more hostages, you'll get more concessions. The prime minister is correct. And Hamas should be wiped off the face of the earth. Every single member. I don't care who they're hiding amongst. They have to be taken out. Let's begin with your telephone calls. Let's go to Michael in New Jersey. Michael, what's on your mind? Yeah, I would have hoped and prayed that the Jewish people would have been smart enough to learn a lesson from my people, the British. You cannot negotiate with a rabid dog, a dog with rabies. My leader, Neville Chamberlain, the leader of the country of England, tried to do that. He went to Germany and he negotiated with a rabid dog by the name of Adolf Hitler. And the only thing it did was 
take, give Hitler more time and more time to build up his military. And when they went to war, more people died. Okay, but wait, Michael. So it, it Israel, sounds, it's, it, Michael, Michael, it sounds great what you're saying, but when you have the world community putting pressure on Israel, what else is Israel supposed to do? Okay, okay, let me tell you what how serious I am. I have five children, four sons and a daughter. Okay, I understand all that. Can you answer my question, please? Because, because Michael, Michael, you come on and you do this John Wayne routine every single time. I'm not interested in John Wayne sitting from the comfort of your home. Netanyahu has to function in the real world. So with the U.S. and and England and France all putting pressure on Israel, what are they supposed to do? Ignore the world and worry about your country. I have five, five children, and a full five of them were held hostage. And they said to me, we can bring in your children home, but we have to stop the fighting and let Hamas continue. Or we can keep on fighting, and they will probably kill all five of your children. I would tell them, let my children die. you got to save the country. Right. It's the country not that knows, simple. It's not Michael. Children, Michael. Michael, children. Michael, Michael. Israel depends on the world for support, for military equipment, and so on. It's not that simple of comparing it. Thank you for the call, for comparing it to a situation of a family with five children. No offense, but that's ridiculous. Let's go to John listening on KDKA in Pittsburgh, but John happens to be in Reno, Nevada. John, what's on your mind? Well, Dominic, you know, with the hostage situation at Gaza, We've approached, we're approaching the end game of this war. Uh, just like in chess, it's down to the end. And Hamas is not going to release hostages unless the IDF pulls out of Gaza. Israel is not close to allowing the IDF to pull out of Gaza. So unfortunately, the vast majority of the raider hostages, besides a handful that may be rescued, are going to be murdered uh, during rescue attempts. It's very unfortunate. There were opportunities to make a deal earlier in the earlier stages of the war, but now that we're at the end game, it's very unfortunate, and I believe this to be the case, Dominic. Well, John, you, you know, you you make some valid points. Uh, we saw that play out this weekend, Israel getting close to rescuing the hostages, and thus the, these, these uh, animals uh, killed them. Thank you for the call, John. Please don't be a stranger. We look forward to hearing from you uh, in the future. So many things to deal with as it relates to this. Plus, we haven't even started yet on the five people shot Brooklyn Brooklyn, New York at the Caribbean Day Parade. It seems like there are shootings every single year. It, it, it's it's incredible and it, it, and it's outrageous. And I don't understand why why the parade keeps continuing. I mean, I get it. I get it. When you have a million people turn out on Labor Day uh, for a positive experience, but it seems like every single year, uh, several people are shot. We are going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have more of your telephone calls. Stay with us. This is Dominic Carter. Now. From New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And I am looking at my Twitter, at my ex, and you can make a comment there. Dominic TV, you can follow me. Catherine Trunk, Catherine says, re referring to the protesters, the thousands of protesters that took to Manhattan uh, just a few hours ago. And as far as I'm concerned, they, they should all be locked up immediately. You can't run around Manhattan or any city or any location throwing smoke bombs. What happens when someone panics and thinks that it's a bomb and has a heart attack? So Catherine says unruly protesters shouldn't think and she has think uh, capitalized of disturbing the peace agitating on 9-11 in Manhattan or elsewhere. Tolerance has its limits. Thank you, Catherine. She says certain actions aren't justifiable, need to be condemned in capital 
letters. Names should be taken and they should be detained, deported if they are not citizens. And let the church say amen. Jersey Shore girl says now they are in Chicago taking over apartment buildings, referring to migrants now. Uh, Ill illegal aliens, whatever you want to call them, this will not end well. And she retweets, that is Jersey Shore girl, uh, 911 calls from Chicago of 32 armed Venezuelan uh, migrants taking over an apartment complex in Chicago tonight. So the, the bottom line is, if you don't stop these savages, they're not going to stop. They're going to kill. They're used to being savages. That's the way they operated in their country. And now they're bringing their operation to America. And to put it in terms that we all can respect, that kids use, they think that we are a bunch of punks to be taken advantage of. And that's why I say, ice, ice, baby. Let's go to Carmine, line five, New Rochelle. Carmine, what's on your mind? Well, Dominic, I never thought I'd ever say this, but I have given up on Israel. And the reason why it hurts me is that I have members of my family who are Jewish. Now, these hostages, Dominic, don't get me wrong. It's beyond words what happened to them. Murder. Savagery. But again, it's war. This is what happens. But I want to refer, Dominic, to something that happened last week. I just hope you heard about it, because it only lasted one news cycle. There was a mother and her six babies who were killed by an Israeli missile strike. And there you saw it, this little bag that contained the mother and her six babies. And then towards the end of the report, the reporter killed you with this line. He wanted you to know that of those six babies, five of them were quintuplets who were born not too long ago. Where, where, where did you see this, Carmine? I don't know anything about this. Where did you see this? At? I'm shocked. It was on Channel 2 early morning news. And... Okay, if, 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 if I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The mother is a casualty of war. I'm sorry. Israel has every right to defend itself. And my response to what you just said, I feel for the mother and her children, her deceased children. My response is October 7th. That's what kicked all of this off. Thank you, Carmine, for the call. I'm coming right back with more of your telephone calls from around the country. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. A question I have is Kamala Harris starting to do an AOC. You may recall at the Democratic Convention, AOC got up there, gave a rousing speech. You have to give her that much, but that's all she ever does is talk, 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 and never delivers for her poor constituents, except for to make them lose 25,000 jobs from Amazon. But besides that, she gave a rousing speech. And two points here. One, Madam Vice President, can you please get off the teleprompter? Look at every speech that she gives. They have tight control of her. She's on the prompter on everything. We've all seen Trump. Every now and then he's on the Trump on the uh, prompter, but he speaks uh, impromptu news conferences, takes questions on and on and on and on and on. So I want you to listen in celebration of uh, Labor Day. Kamala Harris was in Detroit before auto workers and listen to her tone and her inflection. I, what I said about AOC is that it was AOC's reverend voice. And I think this is Kamala Harris when she gets before people of color. It, just, just listen to how she sounds. Everywhere I go, I tell people, look, you may not be a union member. You better thank a union member. <laughs> Member 
for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Because what we know is when union wages go up, everybody's wages go up. Okay, Madam Vice President. So something to consider here, Democratic Illinois Governor J.D. Pritker is declaring, I don't know if this is starting the game because the de debate is one week from today. I don't know if this is starting the game of lowering expectations for Kamala Harris or the man is just telling the truth. I, I would tend to believe that the governor of Illinois is telling the truth. He says, don't underestimate Trump's ability to beat Kamala Harris in their upcoming high stakes debate. He made this comment on CNN. Well, look, I don't think anybody should underestimate Donald Trump. He has won a couple of debates that he's in. Certainly people would say that he won the debate against President Biden a couple of months ago. Uh, and we saw that he won a debate against uh, uh, Hillary Clinton when he ran the first time. I mean, he, he's not to be underestimated. And that's all I'm trying to say. I think Kamala Harris is a tremendous uh, person who with great capability, who will be able to express herself and communicate well. But we shouldn't be thinking that somehow that Kamala Harris has a greater ability to win a debate than Donald Trump. Now, keep in mind, the governor of Illinois is a billionaire. So sort of like Bloomberg, he can say exactly what's on his mind. And I think that's what he was doing there. So, of course, uh, and remember, folks, what I said, Trump is going to win the election. I can't tell you the margin. It may be close, but he's going to win. And the latest swing state polls suggest that Trump could score a decisive victory against Kamala Harris. So we will see what happens. In a moment, I'm going back to your telephone calls, but I want you to listen to this. You may recall last night, uh, the Gold Star families are fighting back, pushing back against the vice president. The vice president claims that it's Trump that was playing politics by going to Arlington with a, a camera crew in, in tow, right? And then I thought about this. Now, maybe they feel because it's official, because they're the president and vice president, there, there's been plenty of video with the vice president and President Biden at Arlington laying reefs, which is the same thing that Trump was doing. But I want you to listen to, so, so, Kamala Harris says Trump was stepping on sacred ground, a major no-no, right? Okay, you're entitled to say that, Madam Vice President, but the families are not defending you, the Gold Star families. They are defending Trump. Vice President Harris. Vice President Harris. Vice President Harris. My name is Steve Nakui. I'm the father of Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nakui. My name is Jim McCollum. I am the Gold Star Father of the United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. This is Mark Schmitz, Gold Star Father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz. My name is Darren Hoover, and I'm the Gold Star Father of the United States Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover. My daughter-in-law, Sergeant Nicole Leanne G., was killed in the Afghanistan exit at Abbey Gate. Our kids were murdered because of your administration. You were not at Dover for the dignified transfer. And no time have you reached out to me to offer your condolences, to offer thank you for Kareem's sacrifice and service. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call, to so much as hear our kids' names said aloud. You failed for three years and eight months to acknowledge our kids. Where were you and Joe Biden on August 26, 2024. Nowhere near Arlington Cemetery. You couldn't be bothered to be with us or even say our kids' names, just as you had done for the last three years. Vice President Harris, I ask you, why won't you return a call and explain to us how you call my daughter-in-law's death a success? President Trump has called. President Trump shows up. President Trump takes the time to hear 
our loved one's stories. We invited him to be there. These are the only memories we get to make with our son, and it is you who is playing politics and trying to detract from our memories made that day. President Trump has been there for us. He's been a rock for us. He showed compassion for us, and he showed he truly cares for the families that truly do know what the ultimate sacrifice really is. And so, so folks, I, I wanted you to hear again directly from the families. So who do you think they believe is playing politics with this? Let's go back to your telephone calls. Let's go to Barbara, line three in New Jersey. Barbara, what's on your mind? Okay, Dominic. So about Arlington, so you play all these uh, family members saying, you know, these things about Kamala Harris and Trump. And what you're leaving out is the fact that you had family members of people who uh, their their graves were taking pictures of, um, which was against the rules. They came out and spoke out that they wanted their children's, uh, you know, graves to remain private. Well, one, and they did Kamala not speak Harris, out. Well, number one, Barbara, they did they not did. speak out. They issued a statement. There's a there's okay. a big difference there, but go ahead. Yeah, we, well, they do want to keep their privacy. They're different people. And okay, okay, all right, that. okay. So, so Barbara, so let's say let's say you're correct about that, right? You just heard six or seven different families, and you're not focusing on any part of that. You just want to focus on the part that you think is going to make Trump look bad and make Kamala Harris look good. How do you how do you praise one and ignore the majority of families? Because the point that Kamala is making is there's Trump. Didn't no, want because to you want to talk there. up Kamala no, Harris because you I think that respect, she walks on water. Go ahead. I would respect if Trump just went there and followed the rules. The fact. OK, that so what about what about when Biden and Kamala Harris criticized. went there and the, and the cameras are there? What do you mean when they went there? When they went there and the cameras are there. Google it. You can see the president at Arlington National Cemetery they every year the with the vice president. Oh, so, the so, so wait a minute. So the rules only apply to other candidates and not to the Democrats? No, they didn't take uh, pictures of, gra of, of graves over there. They took pictures they of the president walking to lay a wreath yeah. with the vice president standing right next to him. So what's the difference? No. The difference is that they didn't break the rules. They're, they're okay, Trump Barbara, no matter what I rules. say, you're no, going to no. argue the other side. No, no. So so they, what? what is the point? There, Barbara, there Barbara, pictures. Barbara, please listen. I have a bunch of calls. I cannot give you forever time. So just what point do you, because no matter what I say, you're never, you're just like Anthony Weiner. You're never going to tell the truth, no matter what I the say to you. So yeah. what is the point so you, that you want to make? Do Do you agree with me? When Joe Biden went there to Arlington, okay, is this the point? The is it? Trump it yet. says here you wanted is to talk true? about protest, Barbara. I don't yeah. want to cut you off. I have a lot of calls. You cannot dominate the show. It says That's here you true, wanted sorry. to talk about protesters. Is that what you wanted to talk about? That's what I started off. With. Okay, so, so quickly make things. your point, please, on protesters. I have a lot of calls. Okay, I cannot let you I, dominate the show. Okay. I, I disagree with those protesters and what they're protesting, but I do feel like the right has been squashing free spe speech. And so the way so they you went think, after so even Barbara, I want to make protesters. sure I got this right. So you think they have a right to run through the streets of Manhattan and throw smoke bombs and 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 flares and and scare possible senior citizens or oh. anybody else that could have a heart attack from their actions. You and on the same day as this 23 year old's funeral in Israel. And you think that's OK? The people that did violent things should be held accountable. But the fact that, you know, was the same day is irrelevant. They believe what they believe. OK, Barbara, thank, Barbara thank you for the call. Thank you. I don't have the patience for that today to, to even argue, to even utter that it's okay for them to do it on the same day that this young man was shot and the other five hostages in the back of the head. I don't have any patience for that this morning, Barbara. I'm sorry. Larry in Brooklyn, line one, what's on your mind? Yeah, uh, Dominic, if you, if, if you want to see the, uh, the, the, uh, the center of, uh, of, of why all bad things are happening in New York City, the tolerance for the mass protesters, which goes way beyond tolerance that's shown anywhere, including in the Democratic 
convention, as somebody once has point, pointed out tonight on another show. If you want to know the center of why everything, and, and also the West Indian Day Parade, while they, were, they, didn't, they didn't even catch the guy and there was no stop and frisk, you need only look to the racist women on the New York City Council who crucified a, a, a great lawyer, a renowned lawyer, Randy Maestro, who was, who was Eric Adams' selection for the corporate council because he was white. As one, as one racist woman said, how do you feel about coming into a position that was just occupied by a black woman? This is the rot that's, that, that's killing New York. The black what? racist women on the New York City Council, uh, head by Adrian Adams. Eric Adams is not to blame because Al Sharpton is, 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 these women are in the pocket of Al Sharpton. He, they are his hoes. You understand what I'm saying? No, 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 Larry, that's not appropriate. Okay, so let, let's not, I, I agree with everything you said until you just went there with that. We're not going to refer to any elected officials in that manner. That is highly inappropriate. Okay. You could have found a different word. I agree with everything you just said. I don't know about the Sharpton factor and so on, but those nuts in the city council and, and Randy Mastro is a friend of mine. But you have, you have to also add to that, that they're torturing him because he's a Republican and because he came from the Giuliani administration. So there is no way. I think uh, Eric Adams is asking for a vote on this. Uh, just to see who is opposing him. There's no way that the city council is going to those, those nuts and la la land. But I'll give you the final word, Larry. Go ahead. Listen, Dominic, calling them nuts. I re you realize what you what I said may have been offensive to some people, but calling them nuts in la la land does not do the trick. That is an injustice, a disservice. These people are evil. Let me tell you something. If they had stop and fricks, do you? There's a very good chance that this shooter at ran this random shooter would have been seen by some cop. But you know what? The cops gaze their their eyes go elsewhere because they're not allowed to look at knapsacks anymore. It's a waste of time because if they see something ball, they can't stop anybody for stop and frisk. So it, there's a very good chance that these the, the people that were shot, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of them were African American. Okay, I don't. One was you're batting a thousand here. That that's the end of the call for 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 uh, for 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 this show. Um, let let's not please let's not do that. It's so unnecessary. We are going to take a break. When we come back, we will have more of your telephone calls. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And we are back returning to your telephone calls. Ilona, Westchester County, line three. What's on your mind? Dominic, when you hear this mother talk about her son and all the families, how they talked about the one person that showed up, how can anybody vote for Kamala Harris? And on top of that, Miss Barbara, where was her compassion tonight? There was none. And how about the fact she says that Trump should follow the rules? Well, I'd like to know one thing that that Biden administration and Kamala followed. OK, we got the weapons over there in Afghanistan. We have the 13 soldiers. We have the animals that were supposed to come home and waited on a tarp eight days for the State Department to do nothing. OK, what about burning down the police station? What about the violence? What about just taking a bad person and putting them back on the street? What have they done for our country? Now you have this chaos in our country. We can't afford to buy anything. We're, none of us. I mean, you know, everybody's like on their guard. You know, I know I am when I'm uh, when I go out, no matter where I am, I'm on my guard. And that should not be. And we should have love and compassion. Kamala Harris and the other one whose brother said whatever. I believe everything you said last night that you have an instinct about her, bro the brother of, of, course. of, of, of the, the, v the VP. I believe yes. you. Well, first of all, it does. 
rocket scientist, I learned her to figure out that Governor Walls is a bit off his rocker. It doesn't take a rocket <laughs> scientist to figure that out, that this dude lies at the drop of a dime about anything and everything. He's been caught numerous, numerous times. And so for the brother to come out, right? Now, I understand uh, in families, sometimes you have rivalries, sometimes you have um, uh, bitter disputes. But for the brother, a one of the brothers, to come out and say the stories I could tell, that means that he's got some serious stories uh, that are probably true on his brother. And who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll drop. But the reason why I take Barbara's calls, to be honest with you, Ilona, is because, again, it's just like talking to Anthony Weiner. You could you could present them with the facts. You could you could talk to your blue in the face. And they don't care about whose funeral was today. Barbara doesn't care. You, you heard what she just said. They have a yeah. right to protest. Disrupting the city, yeah. tearing up the city of New York, and she says they have a right. No matter what you say, and that's why I take the calls, because I want all of you to understand that you're running up against a brick wall, and you have people, I mean, you know, they, they call me Uncle Tom at random. Why? Because I talk up Trump as a black man. That that's why. That's why. And and and, and if you dare the Democrats, I'm I'm sorry, Ilona, they're wicked what they did. They said put that black woman at the top of the ticket and these fools will vote for her unconditionally. And that's exactly the way it appears to be, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And I thank you for the telephone call. I want you to have a wonderful morning. It's not going to work because Trump is going to win no matter what they do. Madam Vice President, you got a problem a week away. What are you going to do about that debate? If you cancel, you'll be you'll be hurt in the polls. If you go to the debate, uh, it, it, uh, it'll be very, very bad for you. Let's go to Dylan in Florida. Dylan, what's on your mind? Hey, Dominic. Thanks for taking my call. I don't really like to comment on that Israel-Hamas conflict that's going on, but I'm going to make a comment because um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. And um, it's not really our business because I'm not Jewish or Muslim, but they did take an American hostage and they murdered him. So Joe Biden should get off his rear end and get his thumb out of his rear end and do something, send some units in there or whatever. And uh, my second thing I want to say is I think it was the guy Michael that made that comment about he would sacrifice his own children to stop the war. That guy's a real coward. Most people that talk like that are absolute cowards. And I, I try to stomach it as much as I can, but then, but then something just takes over. But to compare, to compare a family situation with five kids to what a world leader has to deal with is absolutely ridiculous dylan and netanyahu israel has every right to defend itself the only thing you said that i disagree with and thank you for the call dylan is i don't think you have to be jewish to side with israel all of us should side with israel because israel is standing on the side of what's right what is right for the world and these animals and savages of hamas have to go have a great day Folks, I'll be back 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.